I have mentioned multiple times already in this book that the traditional kind of textbook algorithms for implementing a lot of decompositions in linear algebra are not necessarily highly numerically stable. So these methods are good for learning about, but not necessarily great for applications. And the matrix inverse is one of these examples that I've mentioned multiple times. And so what we are going to do here is compare two different methods for computing the matrix inverse and look at their numerical accuracies. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is copy the code from exercise two in chapter eight. That was the exercise where we wrote out the explicit algorithm for inverting a matrix. And you'll remember, or you can go back to that video or the text in the book around that exercise, I said that this is a great method for learning to understand uh, the matrix inverse and also for translating uh, math uh, algorithms into code, but it's not very numerically stable, not something you want to use in practice. Okay, so take that code, put that into a Python function that you can call on a matrix. And then what you want to do is apply that method to a matrix of random numbers. So five by five random numbers matrix. Apply the kind of traditional textbook here. I call it old school method for inverting a matrix to that five by five random numbers matrix. And then also implement the uh, matrix inverse using QR decomposition, as I mentioned uh, earlier in this chapter, as I introduced you to. Okay, so then we want to compute the estimation error as the Euclidean distance from the matrix times its inverse, so the distance of that matrix product relative to the true identity matrix, which is all um, integers, zeros and ones that you get from numpy.i. I hope that makes sense. So you want to compute uh, a random numbers matrix, compute its inverse using the method that I introduced you to in chapter eight. And then the matrix times its inverse um, should equal the identity matrix. It's not going to be exactly the identity matrix due to some numerical inaccuracies. Um, and then we want to compute the Euclidean distance uh, to, uh, to get a, a handle on the size of that error. And then repeat using QR decomposition to get the matrix inverse. So then there's a figure here where we're plotting the Euclidean distance. And I'm going to interpret this in the uh, in Python after I show you the code for this exercise. So all the code in this cell here is for this function, which I call old school int. And I'm not going to go through it in detail because it is literally copied and pasted from exercise two of chapter eight. The only thing that I added is just this code here, just to say, if it's not a square matrix, and uh, if it's not a full rank matrix, then uh, abort, then, you know, go quit out of this uh, function. Okay, so run this cell. And then here is where I create a random numbers matrix. So five by five, here's where I get the inverse. And here I multiply a times a inverse um, here. And again, this is going to be approximately the identity matrix minus some numerical um, inaccuracies. Here, I'm implementing this, uh, the inverse uh, algorithm through QR decomposition. And as I mentioned earlier in this chapter, this is a more numerically stable way to um, estimate the inverse or to compute the inverse of a matrix. And the reason is that here in QR decomposition, we do not need to invert the matrix. Here, we do need to invert matrix R, but this is relatively easy to invert because it's mostly zeros, the, the lower diagonal, the bottom uh, triangle of this matrix is all zeros. And there might also be some zeros above the diagonal, depending on, you know, the nature of the original matrix. Okay, and obviously, Q doesn't need to be inverted, it just needs to be transposed. Okay, so then we get A times A inverse from the QR decomposition. Here, I'm computing the Euclidean distance between uh, a times A inverse from the old school method, uh, the textbook method, and A times A inverse from the uh, QR decomposition, minus the true identity matrix, which is just the output of the numpy.i function. Okay, uh, Euclidean distance, 
Uh, I call that the sum of squared errors. And I suppose technically, yeah, for this to be really the sum of squared errors, I shouldn't be computing the square root, but that's just a, that's just a factor. I <laughs> won't worry about that. Okay, so here we get the plot. So basically what you want is for this number to be zero if uh, a times a inverse really is exactly numerically exactly the identity matrix then of course the uh, euclidean distance to the identity matrix would be zero so uh so whatever whichever bar is lower wins the race here okay now here it looks like um the old school method actually did better we can run this multiple times um here again so here it looks like qr did a little bit better now the thing is here a five by five random numbers matrix is actually quite numerically stable. It's, uh, it's very easy to invert random matrices, maybe not by hand, but it's very easy and, um, and accurate for computers to invert small random numbers matrices because they are guaranteed to be full rank and uh, they have a relatively low condition number. So these matrices are pretty easy to invert. We want to explore this using different kinds of matrices and uh, in particular, larger matrices. So that is the segue to the next exercise in the next video, and I'll see you then.